Who's up? Who's up? Hey, Vic, when you have some competitions at, at certain positions, how do you go about structuring those competitions and how much is, like, pre-planned? Well, you got to um, give them all fairly equal opportunities, and you don't want guys that right now might be listed as two or third team not get reps with the first team against our good offense. So you're constantly manipulating their practice reps from a number standpoint, also who they're going against. Um, basically, that's it. In, in the spring, you had mentioned you like to throw a lot at the players early and then scale it back from there. Yep. I assume that continues in the training camp. Do you have like a, a feel for when you start scaling it back, or is that sort of a feel thing? Yeah, it's a feel. We're not there yet, obviously, one day in. Uh, but basically, we told the players that whatever was installed in the spring uh, is already in. But, you know, we're having a focus each and every day. So they kind of know what is going to be called on that day. But what was put in the spring is, you know, back in the day when you had 40-some practices in training camp, you could go very slowly and install very slowly. You know, you can't do that anymore. You got to go. So... I think I answered your question. In New York, in New York, Jordan Davis, Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter show up, and are they ready for maybe an increased workload uh, in their rotations of the last few years? Yeah, I don't have uh, a reference to compare it to, not being here before, but I do think, based on yesterday's practice, which yesterday was the first time the 2024 Eagles had any team reps, you know, so really the first time they've done anything outside of individual drill. I thought they looked good. And I thought Jordan showed uh, some good movement abilities, was able to bend his body that I don't think I've seen him do before. And so it was encur it's encouraging right now. In New York, uh, Bryce Huff was essentially a pass rush specialist. You guys have him starting here. Why do you think he'll be able to be a, a, a guy that can play on base downs? Well, I think everybody thought he could. Um, and knowing that the floor was just rush downs, but he's taken the, he's taken the challenge on very well. And I do think he has the talent to do what we want him to do. It's just, he's got to get familiar with doing it. And so it will be a work in progress. Does he look like he could do it today? No, but I do think eventually he will. Yeah, he didn't do much in the spring. Uh, I think he only was able to go to last one or two days. But he had a good day yesterday and um, was pleased with what he did show yesterday. He just looked good, you know, movement and reactions. You know, same thing when you're evaluating players, draft or any free agency. Just looked good, looked like an NFL player. Bryce isn't ready to be that guy yet. What what does he need to do to become that guy? Constantly show improvement and a feel. It's more of a feel. He has the talent to do it, but he's never been asked to do it. In I don't think in college and nor with the Jets. So it's new, and he's got to become more proficient at it. Good. He's a talented guy. He's smart. Um, has good football feel. You know, all of that really is more than I thought he had just from watching the college tape. So that's been a plus. And I think he's a guy that we can move around anywhere in the coverage part. How could you tell that he was, you know, maybe able to move inside? We just tried it. We just put him in there and tried it, and he, he looked fine. That, that quarterback battle, what are you looking for? What's going to separate guys from the job? Just play. You know, usually when you have battles going on and it's time to make a decision, the players made the decision for you and everybody sees it. It's rare that it's so tight that everybody's waiting for who the coach has picked. You know, it becomes obvious and hopefully it will become obvious here through somebody's really good play and not somebody's bad play. So it, it will define itself out. Along those lines, as you're seeing what this defense can do, what's unique about this secondary in terms of the coaching? Well, they're new. That's unique in that we have a lot of new guys there. 
um, that weren't here last year, and you got a new system, and you got a new coaching staff on defense. So there's just a lot of newness, and they got to learn to play together, um, know the nuances of what we're doing schematically, and how to play to the guy next to them. So it's just a lot of newness. What's your philosophy on playing the rookies uh, early in the season? Like, are you just going game to game? Who gives us the best chance of winning that game? Or do you try to get guys involved so that they're, you know, more prepared and ready to go? Like, yeah. I, I'm all for playing the best guys. I think if you looked at my history when we've had rookies, we've played them. And um, provided they're good enough. We ain't playing somebody just because they're young. You know, if we were an expansion team like I was in two places, we might just throw them out there to see what we got. But, I don't, you know, we, we got more serious business here. So, if they're worthy of playing, they will play. Uh, this all season, this all go season, ahead. Yeah, this all season, Howie Roseman said that he wanted to bring a little swagger back to the defense in the acquisitions that he brought in. Obviously, you weren't here last year, but when you look at your personnel, who are the guys that bring swagger? I don't know. I don't know what swagger is to a degree. We just need guys that can play good football, winning football, and when you do that, you have swagger. Well, on the other side of that rookie question, when you have a veteran player like James Bradbury making the shift from longtime corner to safety, you've seen that over the years, guys do that. Is there something about him that... that yeah, he him? might be. I mean, you say that you've seen that a lot over the years. The, the truth is, no, you haven't. The, the list of guys successfully transitioning from corner to safety is very small, with success. Um, there's guys that have done it, but... It, really want what you want and we'll see if he can do that I, James has got a good feel for football very knowledgeable so that will help him in that transition he's still going to play some corner for us too Dick, you've, been, Dick, you've been around you've been around a lot of quarterbacks and head coaches in your career a lot of quarterbacks quarterbacks and head coaches in your career being around Jalen and Nick as long as you have what have you learned about them as leaders in terms of you know leading the team you know it's really too early to tell. What I do know is, from a player standpoint, you can't be a leader unless you're playing up to your abilities. You know? So if you're playing up to your abilities, then you can be a leader, if you're working hard enough and guys see it. You know, if a guy that's not playing up to his abilities, kind of lazy, nobody's going to listen to him. You know? So, and as far as Nick goes, he's a proven winning coach in the league, and... Um, you know, I, I think he does a great job with the team. Yeah. What's that? In terms of Bradbury's case, how has he handled it behind the scenes, going from a long-time starter second team All-Pro to now a guy that he's in right now? Uh, he's been great. You know, he's eager to learn. He's embraced the uh, possibilities of it, and he's been great. Has there been much of a presence in the defensive meeting rooms, and if so, what's been the benefit? I missed the first part. Has Nick been much of a presence in the defensive meeting rooms, and if so, what's been the benefit of it? Yeah, he comes into our staff meeting some, and we review practice with him. Um, he was in our, some of our team defensive meetings and OTAs. You know, we've only been here one day. He hadn't been there yet, but it's been great. A little bit, not not along those lines yet, but we have developed the relationship to where I, I think he would feel very comfortable in doing that. Is there, position, is there a position or position group where you think you have the most competition, the stiffest competition? You know, um, corner, obviously, and inside linebacker, obviously. Um, those are the two main ones, because up front, even at the edge players, we may be able to roll guys some. If I could, if I could ask you about... Wade is being at the crossroads of his career. And you, do you say that to him after what he went through last year? What do you think he needs? Yeah, I, I you know, to, to a degree, yeah. He... He was a guy that had a really good career going. It didn't, wasn't that way last year for whatever reason. So, yeah, he's somewhat at a crossroads, yeah. Like, uh, 
question about that competition inside linebacker. What, what are you seeing from like Nicobe? Hey, can we do something about the noise here or what? <laughs> like the competition inside linebacker. What are you Outside? Seeing? Inside. 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 Well, Kobe, Zach Bond, Devin White, like, what are you seeing from that competition so far? Yeah, well, we've only, again, yesterday was our first day where we did any 11-on-11 work, which is really the true teller when you're evaluating defensive players because the most fundamental thing you have to do on defense is figure out if it's a run or a pass. And, you know, everything was a pass in the spring. So yesterday was one day of that. But I, I like uh, – Zach, you know, he's a guy that's played very little inside linebacker in his career. Um, we think he can do it. Obviously, Devin's had a career where he has done it. Um, Nicobe, you know, has shown that he can do it in college. Really hadn't had the opportunity to do it here because his first year he was behind two good players, and last year he was injured. Um, same thing with Trotter, Ben, Orn. You know, they're all in the mix, really. How have you embraced analytics? Pardon me? How have you embraced analytics? I love analytics. No, it hasn't changed at all. Um, I love analytics. Um, give me anything you want, and I'll sort through it and use it as I see fit. But I, I've been doing analytics myself, my own way, for years. And I don't share my process with anybody, and even fellow coaches. So... I believe in analytics. I, I think analytics people miss the boat a little bit on what's important, but I'm not going to tell them what's important. I do it myself. I love doing that too. So what's that? When you say you do the analytics yourself, I, I along with what they give me. So they give you the information, then you process it your, the way you want to process it, process it, process it yourself. No, I have a I have a way of do I have a system outside of that I use, and I'll use whatever they give me and. Think, decide what's relative and what isn't no relevant, huh? No one else knows your system. None of your proteges have ever. No. In Josh West's case, what indicators? Josh who? I'm sorry, Josh Sweat. Yeah. What indicators are you are you looking for to, that would show that he's the player that he was two years ago? In, in Just what your eyes are te showing you. You know, um, movement. Movement number one, and probably movement number one, two, and three, and how he's picking up what we're doing, and how long can he go, you know, his conditioning. But it, it will be easy to tell because you know what the guy was doing, and can he still do it? Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.